Comrades, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I am Admiral Andre, and today we are beginning our quest to build the Mir space station. To do this, I have started a new save, a completely fresh one for us to build in. So if we have a look in the tracking station, we'll see there's nothing there, because obviously in this save nothing has been built yet. But I think that's a better idea, because then in the future, whatever other adventures we can come up with, we can use the Mir and eventually the ISS as a stepping stone for our adventures deeper out into the cosmos. So let's have a look at the tracking station, just uh, for the sake of it. And of course we get uh, Gene Kerman telling us here what the tracking station is all about. Now, the great thing, of course, is we have the addition of the new desert launch site in the desert, interestingly enough. So that's also something we'll be using. But I think for the Mir, the most appropriate launch site will be the Woomerang one. So we'll be going for an inclination there. I won't be too worried about matching the real inclination, but that is the most appropriate Baikonur equivalent that we have. Then let's just have a look. These mods that I'm using have still not been updated for uh, 1.4.3, so they're all still 1.4.2, but they do seem to work. We obviously had an issue in that Gemini Direct Descent video where the moon went all fuzzy. That was because it was in the shadow of Kerbin, I later figured out. And I also have not reinstalled the stock visual terrain, which of course previously made the uh, ground scatter objects, physical, tangible things. So we won't have that because obviously that messed up the whole ground issue on the moon where the flags just started falling right through the ground and uh, that obviously was not a good thing. So to avoid all of that, we'll just leave those mods. It's only the Keto Graphics one again. It's going to be in the description for you, but very interesting I've had a look in the last few days as I keep looking to see if the mods get updated. Keto has apparently disappeared there. It's no longer on Space Dock where it was before. And uh, on the forum it's actually closed off. So I'm wondering if the creator is, you know, not working on it anymore and decided to delete it for whatever reason. But I still have this one, which was the latest version. And I have to say I do like it more than the uh, astronomers visual packs and all of that. Just the clouds and all of that. It, it looks really nice here. But obviously eventually I will change over to something more updated once it's available. But for now everything is still 1.4.2. Now for this I have installed the docking alignment indicator mod again because that will be a very useful thing if we're putting a modular space station together. So that's something. Then of course uh, EVE here is of course part of Keto, it needs it to work. Other than that also I found a new version of the Kerbal Alarm Clock. Now I'm not sure about this, I'm going to put a link somewhere for you, probably in the description again if you are interested. We actually have to test if this works. Apparently the uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock has not been updated for a while now, but someone, this is now what I read somewhere so I can't vouch how reliable this information is, but someone who is on the team of Kerbal Alarm Clock long ago has continued to update it on their own independently or something. So this one doesn't give me a warning to say it's out of date. So let's have a look if it works with those engine plates, just for the sake of it. Now, of course, here uh, I loaded this up before I started recording here. I uh, only moved over the proton that we had before. This was, of course, with the salute that we launched. Now, in this, I'm not going to focus so much on the proton itself. I did, however, make the whole thing a bit longer because I thought it looked a bit too short and stubby and not quite right. So I added another Rockomax X200 there and another one here as well. I also tweaked the engines there and the, uh, the engine on the upper stage is now a poodle, which I like. But in any case, this is not the main focus at the moment. I just want to see does it actually reflect properly here? Let's clean this up 
and just pick something new here anything I just want to do a test so then of course we have the uh, engine plate doesn't matter which one now and if I actually first the tank because it's uh, going to be useful to know this and then the engine that does work so it now takes account of the engine plate as well if that's now reliable information again but previously it would just show nothing so I think we can go according to that excellent so this is Kerbal Engineer Redux 1.1.4.7 so the most recent version but it's very rare you struggle to actually find that I had to search a long time to locate that but anyway I'll make it easy for you if I can remember so yes comrades first thing of course let's have a look at the mirror core module on uh, Google images and all of that and see what we can do now I think for the sake of it we will probably use the same dimensions that we used for the salute which makes sense again so we, the largest segment will be 2.5 meters so probably two of the hitchhiker storage containers but we'll have a look at that in a moment so I'll see you uh, back on Google now comrades let's have a look so the mere core module of course we find many Kerbal equivalents already that's always the golden rule but let's just have a look now obviously what I'm going to do is I will build this thing over several episodes the whole mirror station but in the final configuration because I do think they moved some of the modules around over time now for practical purposes we will not do that we'll just build it as it was in its sort of complete version but no matter how we look at it we have to have a core module so that is of course this thing here now I think that has the quant at the back there as well if we just have a look yes quant um, one module and these long arms and things which again for that I'll have to use the girders it looks like it even here but I don't have the actual arms there is another thing there so in that sense we'll have to devise some kind of uh, almost like a space tug to move the modules into their final positions just for the sake of making it easier again even if it's not historically accurate but in any case there is of course the mere core module this part here with the three large solar panels on uh, the sides of the sort of inner diameter there so there we'd also see something that kind of looks like a window but uh, let's look at some other pictures this one is I think from Wikipedia yes and this also shows the engines on the back which I'll have to remember to add now of course this is not going to be useful after we add the Quant 1 module because the engines would just burn right into that but this will also help us to then make the final positioning of the station uh, at just like we want it so if we have here this is a main engine so there's two of them and they are of course on the sides of the docking port in the back and they are on a diagonal sort of arrangement there only two of them then if we have a look there's of course the antenna here now I think we'll assume this is the top of the module that we're looking at so that's where the other solar panel would be so on the top or if you look at it from the back on the right there is the other antenna there the main one I think this would be number 15 satellite communications antenna I have an idea with that but we'll play around with it it looks just like one of those normal small relay antennas but I've seen other pictures where it looks a bit different then there's also another uh, antenna this would be now 13 it looks like the approach and rendezvous system antenna for that we'll probably use a normal standard extendable antenna so yes at the back we have the two and a half meter diameter section then it goes narrower so this is a really good one it's French and my French is terrible so I can't uh, especially when it comes to scientific terms like this so uh, at any rate it's more a visual guide for us so if we have a look at this now usually again I just guess the sort of lengths of these various things so I'm just having a sort of guess here uh, so if we take it this that long then okay 
just more or less. So basically the back part here is a little bit longer than this interstage adapter, or not interstage, but just an adapter, and the forward section put together. So that should be roughly halfway then between this section, of course excluding the adapter on the front and the docking module there. So then we have, of course, another adapter and we get to the final 1.25 meter diameter where we will have the uh, various docking nodes for later use. Now let's see, is there anything else that we want to look at? Interesting, there's the SAS, but of course that would be something different here. I have no idea what that is. Mm, not too much here to see other than just the general proportions of it. Now here's something else, but this is another model, and again now with the actual pictures of the mirror core module, it's usually a very small uh, resolution, so we can't see too much, but if we look at several different sources, it usually helps. Now with this one, we see there's a little neck in between the multi-node adapter thing and this adapter, so this one doesn't show that neck. So let's have a look at this. It's so small, but it doesn't look like it has one, so we can directly connect to the adapter there. Now, let's have a look at this one. Uh, this shows the same thing, very simplified again. There's the antenna on the back, sticking out at an angle, and then, of course, there is the sort of antenna for the docking purpose. What else can we see? Hmm. I just have to sort of get a, a wide array of images. Now this is the Kvant 2, so this is later. Let's ignore that for now. Of course, I won't be able to create all of these interesting details on the outside, so that's just something to keep in mind. There is again the base block, so that's really what we call this. But what is this thing? This must be some kind of an arm. I sh I'm sure they had some kind of an arm on the station. And this thing... I'll still have to research what that thing is, but that's when we get to the Kvant section. Let's just have a look at some more pictures. There's the thing again. This one looks like it's a more flat arrangement of the antenna. It's not out at a 45 degree angle, but that's not too, too strict there. We can use a bit of, uh, sort of creative license there. This one is a bit bigger even still. Interesting. Location number six, panels, etc., etc. Let's just see. Eventually, when we put the thing together, now, of course, I'm going to have to keep in mind where everything goes, but I think this will probably be the final arrangement. But again, this is something I'll still have a look at for the future episode, so let's not worry about that now. I think that's really all that we need to see, comrades. If there's anything else, obviously, while we're, we're building, I'll just refer back to that. But uh, I think we're pretty much ready to go. We'll just use the sort of rough outline for this. Now, on this again, I don't see if it has any RCS ports, and I'm sure it must have something to change attitude and all of that. I read that somewhere. I think it's here on the Russian space web, which is an ex excellent resource. And this here says uh, two orbit correction engines. I'll use the monopropellant ones, I think. We'll see how that looks, though. 32 small thrusters. Now, I don't know if it's a single node thruster, like our place anywhere ones, or if it's going to be like the Apollo 4 style uh, RCS thrusters. Probably not. So it has to be very inobtrusive because we can't see it anywhere on these images or even on this photograph, which is again woefully low resolution, but we don't see those Apollo style RCS nodes anywhere. So yes, uh, let's just see anything more here. There's the antenna, or oh, this is a mock-up there. Can I see it? Oh, so small here again. So this is a round one. But uh, there was something I had in mind with that, using the ore scanning one, but I don't know if that's a good idea. Probably not. We'll just use a normal antenna. Just see, there's another same thing again. It also has like very small antennas on the front there, it seems. I might just throw on a few, you know, around the place just for the added effect of it. And I guess that's really it. There's no like round tanks on the outside or anything like that that's too obvious. 
So let's get into the game and just try and uh, do what we can. Comrades, this should be a very fun build and it will be our stepping stone into the cosmos. So let's go. Comrades, we are here again. Now I have to add for this save I turned up the re-entry heating to maximum which is 120% because I think you know too much of our stuff survives re-entry. We really want to make it as hot as possible so we'll have to keep that in mind. I also decreased the g-force threshold for the Kerbals so they'll pass out much quicker now. Uh, which again I think is a bit more realistic and a bit more difficult. I just, you know, because this is sandbox obviously, I just changed a few other things like missing crews will not respawn and what else? Kerbal experience will apply, so uh, our Kerbals will again start with no experience, but that's okay because in this save I really want to use this for long-term things like going to Mars or what Duna in our case, you know, even if that's a fictional craft that I built from sort of just, you know, not even a real type model, we can do things like that as well. That should be really fun, you know, eventually go on expeditions to Leith and all of those places. I've only been there once with a with an uh, SSTO, but that wasn't one that launched from Kerbin, that was docked in orbit around Leith. But anyway, that's a long story. So let's have a look. Obviously, let's begin with the Proton K. Now, here I'm going to remove the module that we already have there, and that is, of course, the Salute. Now, where was the... doesn't matter. Just press Shift, and it will vanish. And the Parrot is going crazy again in the background, but uh, he's been very lively the last few days, which is a good thing. So I think what we have to do here, comrades, is as someone mentioned, for the upper stage, we want to get rid of it when, we, when we're done. Because this is a save I want to keep for long term. I also, of course, still have the other save with the shuttles and all of that. I'll just move the files over. But uh, there we've made such a mess now after all our testing that uh, for long term use, I don't think that will necessarily be the best. But I'll still use that save for testing new craft and so on. But because our space station is something I want to have for a long time, I mean, if you're going to build it, let's use it, then uh, I want to have a new save. So that's basically the, the whole reason for that. Now... To that end, let's just see, can I remove that? Yes, I want to have the upper stage re-enter when we're done with the uh, proton here. So let's actually delete all of the fairings here. Just make our lives easier. And then center of mass. Also, I need to have batteries on this, but that's okay. Let's just move the thing in there. I don't want to see this. This has to be unobtrusive there, so we still have our normal payload. The reason I have this advanced reaction wheel is because like the Apollo Saturn V, the Proton upper stage also had an instrumentation unit. Now again, this is probably oversized and all of that, but again the, the Proton here is not the main focus, but I thought it would be a good idea to have that. We can of course turn the wheel authority way down, but it will be useful to have it here, especially when we're putting things together. But on the first module that's not really a concern. Then in the interstage here again we're just using these struts which are uh, misbehaving once more, as they tend to do. Let's just see, this was six times symmetry I think. Hmm, just so it looks kind of, sort of, semi-decent. But now why is that one misbehaving? I don't think that one is supposed to be there. No, that's how it should be. I just put this uh, fuel tank adapter, of course, empty in there as well, so it looks a bit nicer. Uh, it doesn't just have the four engines, it has the sort of inclined section just like we had with the Saturn V on the second stage. Then of course this is just a bit longer here, it looks a bit better. And for the third stage I have the Poodle as the main 
sort of engine there. And this is an interesting thing because I think it really looks nice. It's obviously not going to match the real thing, but it gets kind of close in the sense of the shape of this nozzle here. And uh, it's not the one that we had previously when we launched Salute, which was the swivel. That doesn't quite look right. And the added thing is I like these pipes on the sides and it adds a bit of more texture and interesting details. But this engine was not a gimbaled one. So for that they had these four small engines on the outside. Now the only thing that kind of looks appropriate is the spider engine. So I used those and of course they have full gimbal. But they're very weak but it still serves the purpose there. So throw that back on and I think what we can do now after we add the batteries because it has to be able to still have power for re-entry but I'm not going to put RCS on this so that's why I thought we should have another tug module we could even have a separate launch for that uh, so now batteries power electrical just small ones to keep the whole thing alive Let's put it there on the struts there, that looks nice. And then just move them in there. So this is the whole thing for the base, of course, for the payload. But that's also got space then for the sort of brains of the operation. The reason why I have another Airstream protective shell fairing base there without an actual fairing is because of course the poodle is as wide as the tank so its base will keep flashing through here the whole time and the only way to hide it is to use something wider and the Airstream uh, base is perfect because as we know it's a bit wider than the two and a half meter diameter or actually in all cases it's a bit wider than its matching diameter but this is perfect for hiding the uh, poodle base so that's why we have that and it adds another bit of texture there more detail is always better comrades always then of course I also added a heat shield here with a little bit of a blader just so it can survive as soon as we stage there and activate the engines. We could even put the engines on their own stage and then separate but that's not really necessary. It happens so fast anyway. So the point of all of this, oh, we still should add the uh, strut connectors I think to the top here. Now this is again not the main focus but just to look the part again. Now this is never an easy thing to do. To line it up as I can remember from the last time we did this. Just so it again looks a bit more like the part. No, no, no. And... Oh, see now it's a bit too high again. Oh, good grief. No! What am I doing? Is that sort of okay? I think that does look good. Now, no, it's not quite right. It's bending inwards here. Why is that? It's because this is flipped the wrong way around. Now it should be... Where? There? Yes, I think so. Mm, it's not perfect though. No, 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 no. Okay, see, this is crazy. This is why I don't want to make this the thing now. Oh, insanity is in the normal reality here. Why is that angle different? Okay, let's try one last time. That looks a bit better. Okay, let's leave it at that, comrades. Otherwise, I'm going to spend the whole episode re reinventing the wheel. So yes, the point of all of this is to put this into a sub-assembly. So it's ready for each launch that we have. But now the bottom one is bothering me again. Why? Why am I doing this? I saw it and I was keeping it in the back of my mind thinking I'm not going to say anything. But I can't help it. 
That's not right. Something is wrong with me. Still not right. What is wrong with this stuff? Make it easy for me. I'm sweating. Uh, sort of okay. The one is light and the one is dark. I wonder why that is. Hmm. Oh well. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's put this into a sub-assembly now. Now the problem is, of course, our main attachment thing. Where is our main attachment? This is now the shell. No, it's not. Uh, of course not. Okay, uh, just move it back again. But then what I want to do is I want to reroute the thing so that it just makes it easier for us each time. So take the remote guidance unit and make this our attachment. So put that in here. Let's see if it will save. And uh, Proton K. Yes, it will. So that's done. New. Let's go again from scratch. So that's done, comrades. I think for this, let's go over into the space plane hangar because it seems to me just a bit sort of more easier to plan out the modules if we look at it from a flat angle. So here we are. Now let's have a look. The first thing is, of course, we have to have a probe core for the station. Now this is going to be again buried inside the structure. So we'll use something small like the remote guidance unit, just like that. This will be the, the computer core of the station that will run the life support and all of that sort of thing. Now, I think we can build the big size off of this and then put the adapter over it. So now in terms of length, obviously there's no strict guideline here because... The diameters here are obviously not going to match the real world, but I just want something that kind of will then keep the whole thing looking sort of still proportional to itself, at least. So I'm just going back here in Google Images now. Let me find one like this. So that's quite a long thing there. It's difficult to say. Oh well, let's just try this, comrades. Let's have a look at this. So this is our core area where the crew will live. Now, of course, the uh, Mir core module had only two berths, I think. But uh, in our case, we can imagine that there's two, even though we could squash eight kerbals in here. Of course, we're not going to do that. Now, at this point, I think we could just as well put our electrical systems in. So let's take the Z400s and put them on the side here somewhere where they're not going to overlap too much with the core. Should we put more than two? That's already 815 charge. And we still will have other modules. So I don't think so. Let's just move it a little bit there. So that's our electrical system as well. Now let's have a look at the adapter. Now I think the salute, because that was anyway the lineage leading up to the mirror eventually, we can use the same idea that we had before. So again, this is the only adapter that is semi-appropriate. So we will use the Rocco Max here and then just obviously move it in. I'm wondering if this battery is going to stick out. No, it's not. So it's fine. Just move it till it sits very nicely here. Hmm. It's very difficult to say because of the dark grey and the dark grey. It seems a little wider actually than the uh, hitchhiker module until you get to that point but then it's already sticking out there. Unless we put it like that and then I'll just move the batteries in a little bit. So that is of course integrated into the structure of the whole thing anyway. They won't have separate batteries slapped onto the side. So there we are. So this is now the sort of back of the module. Now, on top of this, the good thing is we have the 1875 meter parts, which will be a very welcome thing. Now, let's have a look for what we want to use here. 
again if I just refer back to the image now I need a nice picture again from the side of the mirror module it's so difficult when you're looking at an angle to judge the lengths of the various parts but I'm just going to try again so yes it's the adapter plus this section plus another part of the adapter so this is going to be too long okay let's use smaller parts I could use this one again with its uh, sort of wiring on the outside could work actually but now we want to attach solar panels onto this section what about this one this will have sort of broken uh, ridges on the outside this one has nothing again more detail is better so I would rather take something like that that has extra details on the outside so let's start with this one and then do the same thing we did before take all the fuel out and then of course move it in until it sits nice and flushly with this adapter there I think let's just have a look there's a gray line here maybe if we could line that up no but then the black line there sticks out so that's as far as it can go but okay now what's next what about okay let me just have a look again at the thing so the solar panels sit about in the middle of that section just have a look at some of the other images just have a look here on this graph or this this sort of drawing that we saw on wikipedia before it looks like the solar panels are actually a little bit back from the middle interesting on this french one it's the same it's not exactly in the middle okay that's something to keep in mind but now what if I do use this just make the white configuration again I'm not sure of course we can pretend these pipes are sort of electrical wiring then going to the solar panels uh, now if I look again at the length here and now I'm just sort of guessing it again that's more or less right because then we have to start with the next adapter section Mm, I'm still not sure if I like this let's use a sort of normal one with no oh okay it doesn't it's sort of a gray segment no let's just keep using these ones then mm, now it's got this I don't know I don't know I think let's go back to the other one that doesn't look good no 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 start over just take all the fuel out and move it back again until we are happy there perfect now beyond that I think one smaller segment and then that will be that so can I move this like that possibly then we attach the solar panels here yes I think so now beyond this of course we have to go narrower still so that is the job of the FLA 151S and of course all the fuel is taken out and that I think if I just have a look again just zoom out and now just take my fingers and sort of say have a look this is how big this back part is yeah sort of right I'm just going back to the images again so if we take this segment here and move it over then yes uh, sort of sort of it's a very difficult thing to guess this stuff and it doesn't help if I look up the meters because our parts are not the same size as the real thing so meters won't really help us here even though we could see that this is hmm, eight meters long it's just for the sake of it look at the real thing core module diameter length is 13 meters and the diameter is 4 meters 
Now again, there is... We don't even have four meter parts, so... But if I'm... Oh man, why do I do this to myself? So the thing is, let's just have a look again. 4.15 meters is the diameter, so that would be of the back section which we see here. So 415, let me write this down. And there's a reason I'm doing this. Not sure if it will pay off. 4.15 D, so for the diameter. Now the diameter is the full thing, not just the radius. Am I right? They say diameter, yes. So if we convert that now into three or uh, two and a half meters, which is what this part is, if we just have a look, 2.5 meters, then I can get the proportion of the thing in our scale. So this will be to 2.5 meters and the length, I'm just going back to Wikipedia again, the length is 13.13 meters and then of course I have to convert that into whatever it is. So it's a small little math puzzle. Comrades, um, you're going to have to give me a few minutes for this. Uh, let me just see if I can figure this out. Just another interesting aspect to our build here. Okay, comrades, if I did the math right, which is a very poor uh, prospect here, then it would seem that the, of course, the diameter of 4.15 meters, if you take the 2.5 meters that we have, it's 60.24% the size of the original. So then I just uh, times 13.13 .13 meters length times 0 0.6024 and then I get our length which is then 7.9 meters length. So we are actually slightly over our length already because that means the whole thing has to be 7.9 meters long which I assume includes the docking adapter in the front because it doesn't say that it doesn't have it and of course the docking adapter launched with the core module. So I think that gives us something, you know. I don't know if anyone has ever done that before in KSP, so that should be something. Now, in this case, let's take the section here away and throw on the docking port thing, the Hubmax multipoint connector. Of course, that gives us too much again. What if... Let me just go back to the images of the thing. Could it possibly work? Because here again we have this little neck which we saw the one model have but the other images did not. So if we move this back like this. I just don't want that black line there. Or is it gone now? There. You see I wanted to sit nice and flush with the thing. I think that's the, the best we can get. That takes a little bit more of the length off. So now we still have a... 70 centimeters too much and we still have to have the docking uh, ports on here so where would we take this away now possibly in this adapter segment here taking a part of the back off is going to be too much of the length you see that now it's only six meters the overall proportion must still be relatively okay. I think this doesn't look too bad, but then of course we still have to fit the solar panels on here, which is another beast. You see, I don't want it hitting anything here. So of course, again, this is not going to now be the correct proportion, but so be it. Now the problem with this is I'm going to have to put these solar panels on little struts themselves because if they are deployed, let me just rotate it, then they are going to hit each other right there. Now, of course, they are sort of massless objects to each other, I think, so it won't make a difference, but I don't want them hitting each other. And you can't actually move a solar panel like this out with a move tool. It doesn't go any further than that. In fact, it goes a little bit inwards, so I'll have to put a a strut thing there as a base for it but in any case so we could work that out there it's just going to be very close to the docking port which is now not the case for the real thing so I think we're going to have to lose some length somewhere else let's just have a look again at that adapter there 
It might be too much. But now what else do we have for this? We don't have another two and a half meter adapter that could work. We've got this thing. No, that's too small. This thing here, but that's even bigger. It's got a more flat angle and we want one that now has a sharper angle. So what could work? What could work? This is the same problem we had before. There isn't really an appropriate part for that. Uh, I'm not going to use a fairing because then we also have to deal with a fairing base there. No, I think what we're going to have to do... Can I undo this? Please? No, not this one. Undo again. And again. And again. There. I just want to have that back. What we could do is just move that further in, I suppose. But it's not going to take the length away. That's a problem. Doesn't matter how far we move this in now. That's of course how we could do it. That's now 8.1, so it's almost there. 7.9 is what we're looking for. There. So now it's got the appropriate thing. But why is the width 2.6 meters? That's weird. Is it because of these handrails on the outside? It could be, but we know this is a 2.5 meter part. There's no 2.6 meter thing here. So that's the appropriate scale for the Mir core module in KSP. But now this is too small for the solar panels. Hence, I think we're going to have to take one of the back things away. It's going to have to be, comrades. It's going to have to be. This adds a whole other dimension to the build that I wasn't planning for. But it's good. It's a good thing. Push yourself. Now let's have a look. Could I put a fuel tank here? Uh-uh, no orange stuff, and I don't want striped things like that. It's a pity they don't just have a simple white one. This one is too big. What else could I use there? We could go the route of adding the other pod, the lander can, but then we have to deal with its different lengths and all our width. Now it's 2.7 meters height, so now it's higher than it is wide. It's because of this little window here, but that doesn't matter so much. We could do that. I don't know, I don't like the fact that this thing is narrower than the hitchhiker can. But we could do it like this towards the back, maybe. I'm not sure about that. Then we see the gold foil sticking out there. 7.6 meters. Now this is too flat still. So in that case we would have to add another engine plate on the back. That's now 11 meters. How can it be 11 meters from 7.6? It's because of that node. This is not stageable. How on earth can it go from 7.6 length to 11.5 with such a thin thing added on the back? That's a definite error there. I think it's counting that node. Is it though? Yes, look now it's 7.8. So we know that's 7.8 really. So we could have a little bit more length. But now, is this looking okay? Yes, we can have this weird window on the bottom now, but I suppose it's their window on the world. I don't know. I don't know. At the end of the day, we can't overthink things like this. What else could I use in the back, though? Just so I'm sure I exhaust my options. I could add a structural element here. One of these tubes, maybe. Mm, probably the best. That's 10.3 now. That's too much again. And then we still need the engine plate. Which now weirdly interacts with it. Ah, 
I'm just going to put it like this so we know we get an accurate length reading. But how does that look now? It looks weirder. Actually, strangely enough, it looks more strange because of this bright white in the back. Wow, who knew this was going to be such an issue? Hmm. If I move this, though, it's going to move the whole thing. Otherwise, we could put this there. That might look a bit nicer. And, of course, it's hollow there, so it's a good thing to fit over here. Like that. So we know there's no gaps for air to escape. And then, of course, the plate on the back where we're going to put the docking port. Now, that gives us 8.4. It's 2.7 diameter now. It keeps getting more. I wonder why is it's because of this tube that's slightly wider. But we'll still keep our calculations according to the two and a half, I think. Unless we change it now. Maybe I should change it because this is slightly wider than that. Yes, I think at the end of the day one single hitchhiker thing is going to be a bit better. I'm not sure about the look of this though. I don't like this tube here. It's too bright. I wish I could change the color. Uh, but really there's no other choice. Unless we put one of the RCS things on. But that's yellow. Or it looks like that. Maybe that would be better. Then we also have the onboard fuel. Yes, 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 yes. Let's... Oh, 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 now I messed up. Let's do that. Now again, I just... You can see there at the top, sort of, it's still bending inward there. I want it to fit as nicely as possible. I think that's probably the best we're going to get. So now, instead of the plate on the back, we have this tank. Of course, we'll imagine there's a hole through here and all that. Otherwise, how can you dock with the thing? That's still 11 now. It's too much now again. That's 7.8. And then we still have the docking port. So I think we're there, comrades. I think we're there. After much uh, gnashing of teeth. Now, this is 2.7 meters, though. Should we even bother with that? Mm. Not sure, not sure. Let's just put the docking ports on. Now, in this case, I'll use the normal clampatrons, not the juniors, because that does make more sense anyway. So let's just throw them on. And, of course, there. But now I don't like the way this looks. I think because the docking ports on the real thing, they're more sunken in. Let's see if we can move this in as well, a little bit. Of course, it still has to be usable. But what if we do something like that? Or until that sort of door shows. It's a bit better. I do like this hatch with a handle and all of that. It looks better than a sort of just a normal default texture there. Like that. Yes, let's do that. That gives, gives us a guideline as well for how far we should move it in. There we go, and one more. Good, so we have that section done, and we have 7.9 meters. You know, I think I'm just going to leave it, comrades. The handrails are anyway what's adding most of that extra length there, or width and height, so let's not bother with that. Now we still need a docking port in the back, and I think we are probably going to... Are we going to... We're not going to have it like that, so we're going to have the... 
Now, of course, ignore the length there. Are we going to have it like this with a white on the outside or with the sort of darker colors? Maybe the darker colors. They look more sort of industrial again. Let's just see. Maybe. Because we still have to have engines here, so you can't make the thing too nice. I don't know. Not sure. Actually, the white might be better. Looks more space proof, I guess. Uh, let's just move this back again so that Quant 1 can have a home. Now, of course, here we have to move it out as far as that node is not going to stick out there. Unless, of course, I change the node configuration here. So, two, of course, this is not the right two for where the engine should be. Three, four. I don't know if this really makes a difference. Maybe we should flip it around. But I like this. Ah, oh, nah, let's just put the thing on. So this one will stick out slightly more than the ones on the front because we still need to have a bit of a room there for the Kvant or for the engines anyway. So ignore the length here. We know we're more or less right anyway. Now the engines have to be in a sort of diagonal configuration. Now can I get the puffs to do this? They look like the right size but we're not going to be able to fit them in there. So maybe not. Oh dear, oh dear. Can I get a picture? Uh, that one doesn't show it really well. No, let's try something else. Uh, this one, the diagram again. So they sit more towards the outside. And they do stick out a little bit there on the back, according to this diagram. Okay, well... Let's try, let's try and see what we come up with. So we'll put them here, two in the radial configuration like that. And then, of course, we move them in and uh, also that they, that they don't stick out like that. F, there we go. So somewhere like that, but this is too massive. No, 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 no. Don't think that's going to work. It would have been so cool though because of the fuel being the right thing. Uh, don't want this. That's not gonna look right. It would have to go out to there. That's too big. Oh, blast. I wish we had more monopropellant engines. I really do. So now, what do we do? What do we do? What's the appropriate course of action? We're never really going to even use those engines. Just the first time, but after that the uh, Kvant will block them. Okay, let's use creative engineering. We'll take a significant chunk out of the monopropellant tank and then we will put some fuel liquid fuel tanks in there and use liquid fuel engines so again we can justify this because we've taken out monopropellant so we imagine the tank is a bit smaller than it is now we don't need too much here just a little bit is that right that doesn't look right I guess it is what does it look angled no, it is right. Okay, just like that. So now we can use possibly the cub vernier engines, even though their uh, vectoring is fixed in a certain direction, I think. Yes, they can only gimbal in one direction, but eh, that's okay. We still need RCS ports on this thing anyway. And they do look much more appropriate. So it's like not quite that far, more like there, I would say. And oh yes, the scale is much better. Let's just see how far could we move it out. 
Should we show some of the base there? I don't know if the real thing did, but again it gives texture to the overall thing, otherwise the it looks, you know, that's the thing. If you make a, a craft that's all just plain white and smooth, it doesn't look very interesting. Even if we do deviate from reality now, this whole exercise is a deviation from reality anyway. What about that? That makes it look like proper engines. Yes, I like that. So now, of course, we could still dock the Quant because it has another kind of adapter there, so it doesn't sit flat on the back there. Now, what do we need now? We do need a solar panel trio. Now, for this, I'll use the octagonal strut. So let's just put one on and then use that as the template for the others. So, solar panels, there is only one choice, of course, it has to be the Gigantor one. Other, one. other ones will not look appropriate. So now let's just zoom all the way in so I can see when they overlap again. That's as close as I can get it. There, I can breathe again. Okay, so take that and put them on here. Now, in this case, I would have liked to go about there. You see, not in the middle, just about there, so they're in line with the edge of this thing. But are they going to hit the adapter now? No, they miss it with a millimeter, but that's okay. Again, we have to have our Kerbal interpretation there, make allowance for that. Okay, then that is sort of the electrical line that runs through there, we imagine. And then I take another one in single symmetry and again using the uh, base of that adapter. We try and get it in the correct position. Very difficult again. No other symmetry is going to work for this. I think it's quite, quite appropriate. Mm, I hope so. Anyway, let's see if we can move these maybe a little bit back. Yes, yes, as long as they're still free there at the base, yes. Okay, that will be that, comrades. We'll use this as our uh, electrical system. And hopefully that will give enough room for the other modules, but we will have to see. Um, what else? Now we need some kind of RCS system. Let's just save this as the mere base block. Just remember if you're looking for this in the Dropbox, save. So what do we do with the RCS ports? I guess here we'll definitely use the linear ones and then just throw them on several places. Again, there's now no equivalent that I could find that shows us this. So we'll put it in the middle there and just move it so that the nozzle alone shows. with maybe that ring around the base. Yes, that looks nice. And then what else? Where else could we put some? So that will give us a downward, a side and a back movement. So now I think probably four on the outside here and then maybe just on the back as well. Let's put it there where that gray line is. And again, we'll use just that ring as our reference. So on the back, let's put two in, a, in another diagonal configuration. Now again, if this was not the real case, then forgive me comrades, but I think it's a good compromise because this will also help us if we need to move things. I ah, can't move that though. Uh, put it on the outside and flip it.
and then move it in hopefully yes find solutions we'll put this basically on the same sort of uh, diameter that the engines are and then just move them in again so we just see the ring there and of course the nozzle is still not clipping good so that will give us back and reverse forward side all of those things at least the basic controls so yes what else do we have to do here let's just have a think about this of course this thing can't roll now but we'll have the little bit of torque that the probe core has, which I think is appropriate because I know later on some of the Kvants brought uh, gyroscope things. What did they call them? A gyrodyne or some? I don't know. But, you know, gyroscopic controls should be anyway incorporated in some way. So that will help us with that, I think. Then the antenna, so the antenna should sit somewhere here, which is now exactly where the RCS port is. Hmm. But it's anyway on the edge there. So I think it's just going to have to be a very simple antenna. No. Okay. Actually, it has to be deployed. And then... Moved so it points backwards, I think. That's what it looked like. Yes, that diagram does show it pointing backwards. Then, of course, we just move it in so it's not sticking out this far. Is that about right now? This is going to cause a problem during the uh, launch, but I'll fold it up for that. So we'll have to put it there where the base is not clipping there. Now this nozzle is awfully close to it, but it's not in the way. But I wonder if that would actually interfere with communications. Where's the center of mass? We could put these RCS ports on that ring. But I think... Should we even put them in the middle? Maybe. Maybe that would be better. That looks okay. Yes, I think so. Just so we know that the antenna is clear. So then, I think, does that stick out far enough? I think so. Shouldn't be any further than that. The other idea that I had, it's of course not usable, but is to throw the narrowband thing on. But if we just look at the scale, it's too wide anyway. So now we need a... Another antenna for the docking, so it sits where now? Let me just have another image, another reference point. So not quite in the middle, but it's pointing straight up there. Maybe one of these. Of course, we can't move that and we still need to pack this up for launch. No, it's going to have to be one like that. It sits here somewhere, but then straight up. That looks more or less right. And of course I'll move it in just so the white and red stick out. And just the base there. So this is the docking antenna for the back. Mm, slightly angled. Yeah, sort of, sort of. If it's not perfect, that I won't mind, because antennas are placed in very strange positions. Okay, that'll do. So let's pack this up. Pack this one up. Even though it clips through the thing, it doesn't matter. We'll deploy it and pretend it works out. This is easier to put into the fairing of the proton anyway. The other thing is the antennas that we saw on the front. There's a few of them sort of sticking out sideways from the docking ports. I'll just put one on there, I think. Here, on this position, sticking straight out, I think. This is a very minor detail, so we don't have to worry about it too much. But now we can't actually get to that place. It's not an attachable point. Hmm. The docking ports are... Oh, 
Okay, let's use that and then play around with it. Now again, getting this precise is a semi-impossible task. Especially given that our viewing angles are not always the easiest. But I think this does work a bit better than the VAB for this sort of craft. Ah, now it doesn't really play along here. It still thinks it's in a different orientation. No, a bit more down. This one sticks out too far though. And it's not quite right. This is not even an important detail. Why am I... Oh, why am I spending so much time worrying about it? Uh, it's what I do. Mm, I think that's okay. I just don't want it sticking out this far. It's just not how I operate. See, now it moves back forward again. Okay, well, it's going to stick out this far then. Like thusly. No, man, why does it flip so ridiculously? I think that's a decent compromise. I know it's not perfect there, but this is not something that has to be perfect. Any movement now is going to just mess it up further again. But that's okay. So that is our front docking antenna, I would imagine. So we can use that. That looks so weird though. Man, why is that not a physical thing that you can attach to? That looks better. No, it doesn't. If we look at that sort of slope. It should be like that. Okay, that's it. That's it. We're happy. I'm happy anyway. Lights I'm not going to bother with, comrades, because the lights that we have are not really, uh, you know, it's, it's too oversized. It's these massive freaking lights. It would be nice, though. Could we somehow work one out? Maybe. Maybe one of these flat illuminators moved into this base here. Again, it's not going to look too appropriate, but forgive me, comrades. It's for the sort of atmosphere, and it will look very nice at night when we have the other things attached. So this is purely for the aesthetics. Now, we could get away with something like this, it'll still work, but it's weird because it's, it doesn't make sense, you know? Light can't be clipped into something else and still work. But then it's probably going to interfere with the solar panel. Uh, you see, clipping there, even though again this is now not what the real thing had. Like that. It's the neatest I think I can make it look. So that will be to the side eventually. If I just have a look at that other diagram of the sort of final mirror. It's like this core module lies on its side. Now it's never going to show up again. Well, this one it shows. So the Quant 2 is eventually going to be illuminated by this. But Priroda and Crystal are on the other angles of the panels. So maybe then we'll have to do the same thing with them. 
I don't know if this is looking so great, but just seeing that final station in the night nicely illuminated makes the idea worth it, I think. Although, again, I doubt the real station had, like, lights on the outside for viewing, because no one was going to view the station from the outside anyway. If you're talking at it, you're not going to be admiring it at the night time. But for Kerbal purposes, for video purposes especially, I think it's a uh, good idea. You know how dark it gets with these mods that I have. Come on. Okay, I think that lines up generally nicely. Breathe. There. Now I can move in a little again. Ay, ay, ay. Sweating here. Okay, that'll do. Now let's just have a look at the top one again. Its angle looks pretty okay. And you see it's now... It's too... Too low. That's still clear for the panel, so we're gonna have to move that one now as well. Uh. Although the base is not going to be as neatly hided or hided, hidden as uh, this because of the extra pipe here. Hided. Mm -mm, don't like that. We might just make this one look slightly different compared to the other two. Just, I don't like that little clip there. Like that I can live with. Yes, let's do that, comrades. There it is. So now we have three lights for the uh, various future modules, just to make them stand out, I think. It doesn't disrupt the lines of this uh, module too much. And if you don't like them, you can just take them off very easily. Not a problem. I think it'll be worth it, especially against the solar panels. It'll light up very nicely. Hopefully, otherwise I'll relaunch it for the next episode. So let's save this again. Is there anything else that we need to do? I just have to think now. We've got everything I think that we need. Oh, the roll things. We can't roll the station, but that's why we have the uh, gyroscope thing. Now, I think we're ready, comrades. That's the mere core block. Now, again, I know this is going to show it's too long, but that's also because this engine plate is now messing it up again. And, of course, we have the antennas on the back. But we saw we got pretty close there. So I'm happier to do it like that and sort of try at least to get the scale more or less right. With the shuttle and stuff, it's obviously impossible because they already give us things like the cockpit. So we have to go on that as the scale. We can't then change our mind and go according to meters because I can't edit that part. So I'm not going to uh, be too obsessive about it. This is just for the sake of this module. So save again. Now let's switch back to the VAB. And I'll just shift. Uh, actually, it would be easier if I reroute. Just because now, otherwise each time I'm going to have to be finding the thing on the inside. Maybe we could move this down a little don't like that line there, even though that's how it normally sits. No, don't interfere with that. No, do interfere with that. No, 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 no. Made it worse. Okay, never mind. Go in here again and find the part. This is why the VAB is sometimes difficult. So say reroute that to... Let's just take this fuel tank on the outside. It's the easiest thing to grab. So this 
let's just make absolutely sure this is empty this is empty and of course that's partly empty so we still have those other tanks in there as well so that gives us about 21 second burn which i think is appropriate we don't want to have too much fuel on this thing so now we can take the i don't like those lights to be honest with you I wish we had different lights, but that's the best we can do with Kerbal, I think. The other option is, of course, the spotlights. Uh, it's a bit smaller. Maybe I should do that. Just to have a look at it. So we'll put it there exactly where it flips. And of course, it's not properly aligned again. And then move that down. I think that will be a little bit less obtrusive. Now that's pretty appropriate already. And then, of course, it's sticking out a little bit in there. So it has to just go out a tiny bit. And then let's move it down as well. Is that sticking through there? I think it is, actually. There. That's the best, I think. It doesn't look quite as ugly. No, we'll use that. Definitely, it's not as ugly as that. Get rid of that. Then we could... If you even want to go extra creative, you can mess with the colors and make the whole thing look very interesting there. But I think that's not going to happen for this purpose uh, of the video here. So let's just move this back in again, do the same thing... Let's just see how far we could get away with it. Like that? No. A bit more. Yes. I think so. There we oh no! I hate when this happens. I have to do it over again. I hate when I do that. One time symmetry, please. Just when I'm happy with it, I see I've already got two times symmetry. I think that's pretty close to the other ones. Maybe a bit higher up. Ay, ay, ay. Yes, I think so, comrades. Oh man, it's, is it sticking out there? No. Okay, save again. So that does look a bit better there. Now what we have to do is find a kind of a way to put this onto the proton now. So I think... I'm tempted to use this decoupler, but this thing is very unstable. It's very forceful, even if you don't tell it to be very forceful. So let's use a smaller adapter, like that. And then put this almost zero, because I don't want it interfering with our orbit. Then a tank that's empty for support. quite that tall maybe now we'll end up with the same thing okay empty out and then we just throw on the proton and I think that will be that comrades and then of course I'll just launch again with uh, music and so on now let's just open up our sub assembly proton okay and you go 
somewhere there. Why are you not attaching there? No, you traitor. Uh, I should have another thing on the top there. Okay, never mind. Save that again. Go new. Go something. But it should work. It's not going to attach either. Where is the attachment point? It doesn't have one. Oh no. Well, we'll just have to build it again. So, go back to the one that we just had. Mere base block. And then load the save of the Proton K. No man, merge it, for goodness sake. Now I have to just remove all of this again. Oh man. It's a pain because now I have to put those struts on the bottom again. But I won't do that on camera. I'll do that just before the launch. So now in this case I would like you to attach there, please then we could just keep those struts for extra support. Why not? I know they're attaching to the engines, but we pretend they keep the engines stable. How does the rest of it look? Almost right. Almost right. Just a bit longer, I think. Or not as sharp on the top. No, maybe a bit longer. There, so that is for the mere one. We'll keep the decoupling as it was before. I was happy with that. And then just move the whole thing down. Just check the staging. So I also fire the spiders as soon as we separate because they're like the Ulich motors and then the main poodle fires. Then we break off the uh, fairing, then we separate, then if we have to make a change we'll use the engines, but we'll probably never use them, and then engine plate is not decouplable. There. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> let me just think for a moment, what is it that we still need? Just save this now. We do need these struts. So I'm gonna attach them, comrades, and then I will meet you on the launch pad to discuss our orbit. Comrades, I think just before I launched now, I thought I need to check this. We're going to have a big problem with this. I'm going to have to deviate from our length that we had in mind here. Just because when we have to attach the other modules to the ports here, they are also going to be two and a half meter diameter which is, let's take a tank for that, uh, just like this, two and a half, am I right? I think so. Now you can see the solar panels are going to clash with them. They are too long, so this has to go back to the way it was before, unfortunately. Now if I just look at the Google images, we can see the panels are still deployed with those other modules attached, so they obviously have to have enough room for them. So... To do this, let's just move this back again. We're going to now have this neck here again, unfortunately. Unless I put... Pull this thing out, maybe. Let's try that. Let's try that. That's my maybe the neatest thing I can do. But now again, this is now the core part of the thing. So I'll have to move this one down. No, it's not going to move further than that. Uh, and I can't move the solar panels further back because they're almost hitting the adapter there. So I think we'll just have to add something else here. I don't want that little neck before the port there, so I'll rather put another tank in there, I think. So yes, good thing I was thinking about this now. We'll make that a grey one. I know it's now deviating from the color. Or should we do that? Let's do that instead. Yes, that'll leave enough room and again it reinforces the fact that these panels are slightly offset from the middle of this section. For this exact reason. Try again. 
and it leaves enough room. Yes, much better comrade, so I know it's a bit longer now than I was planning, but this is for practical purposes, otherwise I would be very sad if I discovered this later when we try to attach one of the other modules. So save this and then I also want to put custom one is just to deploy everything. Toggle the panels, toggle the panels, toggle the antenna, toggle the other antenna, and toggle the other other antenna. And save and go to the launch pad. Now it's night here, comrades, at Woomerang, so let's fast forward. We uh, obviously want to see when we launch. I love the aurora there in the distance. So I don't think this will affect our power, since we're still plugged in here. Oh, 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 that'll do, that'll do. It's a very nice sunrise. We also see one of the radar or communication things there on the mountain, but that's not one of our communication ones. You see, we're still talking to Nye Island. Which is, of course, down there somewhere. So that's some secret uh, radar dish there from the Reds, I suppose. Uh, which we are playing now anyway. But I think the rocket looks much better with the extra length on it as well. So comrades, with that said, I am going to launch us now. And just fast forward with some music. But before I do that, I wanted to talk about the orbit. Now obviously Kerbin is 10 times smaller than Earth. So if you have an equivalent orbit to the real world, it's going to seem like it's much further away. So if I have a look again at the Wikipedia, the orbit for Mir space station, no, 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 just go back, click on Mir. The orbit was 354 kilometers perigee and 374 apogee, so 350-ish, 360 for the middle point. But if we did a 360 kilometer orbit around Kerbin, it's going to seem like it's high orbit, and it actually will fall under high orbit already. So I'm going to go 120. So there's a few reasons for that. The first is, of course, so it looks like we're in a low orbit, which we're supposed to be, because if you're in a 360 kilometer orbit around Earth, the Earth is still filling your field of view here. But on Kerbin, obviously, it will seem much smaller, uh, because it is smaller. But also because at 120 kilometers, we can time more 100 times. And uh, so that's obviously convenient. And the other reason is I don't want to go lower because if you go low, low orbit, like 80 kilometers, the terrain does all these weird glitches. I'm sure you've seen it before, especially along the coastlines where the water sort of flashes. And I don't want that. I want it to look nice. So 120 is the goal. So comrades, F5 with that said, and full speed, let's have a look. I'll do the normal countdown and we'll, we'll launch to the east. And I think this was a 51 degree inclination for Mir. But in our case, I'll just go 90 and then we won't worry too much about that. It's roughly equivalent. I think we'll have about a 45 degree inclination. So with that said, do the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
comrades, we made it. We are in a 120 by 120 orbit and the planet is looking as fine as ever. So I think with that we can now separate. I just want to save again, make sure that uh, everything is stable. And, uh, oh, other thing now. I never put the pro core back in here again. Oh. That means this thing is going to be space debris now. Uh, I don't want to do that again. Let's just separate. Barely changed it. I think in that case I'll have to find other creative ways of deleting it. I.e. go into the tracking station and remove it. Just because that's not something I want. Obviously for the... Dropbox save, I will put a probe core on there and batteries again so you can do it. Because we've done it already. It was just now that sub-assembly thing that messed the whole thing up. But now we're very slowly drifting away from that. So we are detached. Let's press 1. Just get everything fully deployed and looking stunning here. And that is that. You see now at least they don't clash there, the solar panels. Let's just uh, turn it maybe like this. Doesn't really matter now anyway. But that is the Mir Core module. And I think I did a decent job on that. I'm happy with it. Obviously we had to make some compromises and get creative in terms of what parts we use and all of that but I think this is a decent thing so let's just see the lights obviously at night will look stunning and uh, let's just fast forward so this thing drifts a little bit away let's go around once because we can go at 100 times and then just get a nice thumbnail image of course should we do it here somewhere? No, I want to see the thing in the light. So let's do it at the next sunset. Somewhere... Here, maybe. Ish. We're still going to see that in the background now. Mm -hmm. Oh well, it's a little bit of insight into the thumbnail making process. Uh, let's just move this down. Wait... We still going? No. Just have such a weak reaction wheel here. It's really just a gyroscope, basically. This is barely controlling the thing, but that's how I like it. So we'll just say lock to prograde for the sake of the photo opportunity. And then... Now we'll go around again. That's just how it is. Pitch black. Wait, stop, stop, stop. Let's use the lights. Definitely worth it. You see, they're not overwhelming, but they do at least make the thing a little bit more visible against the total black, pitch black background here. Uh, fast forward again. Come on, this is the quest for a thumbnail. Ooh, that was a good opportunity. Ah, well. Let's just roll this thing around. No, I want this back on. And then... No, what will make a good thumbnail? Anyway, comrades, this is too much rambling. I'll take care of this after I end the recording. So I think the next module of Mir was the Kavant that we had a look at now. Maybe. I'll have a look, of course, for the next episode, then we'll decide what to do there. But this is the Mir core or base block here. And with that, just get it nicely lined up. Is that a good photo? Why not? There, F1. So, see you next time, comrades. I hope that you've enjoyed and that you will have a fantastic day as always.